Okay, like they had they had like one that you could like sit on, but then they had like the slides and stuff. And so one of the girls that was with us, she wanted to get on the slide. And so we all go over there and she's like struggling to climb up on the thing. <laughs> so we all like, okay, everybody like <laughs> grab a spot and try to like steady it so she could get on the thing or whatever. I don't know what happened, but child, the slide went over my head. I was underwater. The slide was over me, so I couldn't get back out. Nobody saw it, but oh my so literally, I, I'm like in the ocean about to die. Like, oh my God, because I couldn't oh get goodness. back up. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, 50 Lem fam. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's J and D here. We're here with the 50 Lem Chronicles again there with another is. new episode, right? Um, this is going to be a super fun episode, but before we even hop into the topic today, um, we just want to thank you guys so much for supporting us. Those of you who have are tuning in for this episode, and we're also saying happy December. We made it. Um, you know, right? <laughs> it's been a journey. It has been a journey. But um, for those of you tuning in for the first time, just to know a little bit about what the 50 Lamb Chronicles podcast is about, here we discuss everything from politics to pop culture. We represent 50 Lamb Voices. We detail 50 Lamb experiences, and we have and continue 50 Lamb conversations. So we just want to thank you for tuning in, whether it's for the first time or you're back for this fifth episode. We're just excited. This episode is going to be a fun one. Um, yes. You know, I think we've kind of had the trend of really just kind of snatching the community by its edges and just going, <laughs> you know, you know, feet forward, just all the way into the deep end. But I think this will be a just real lighthearted episode because we'll just use this as an opportunity for them to get to know us better right. and for us to just have some fun, like, really just going to talk about ourselves and what we're into and what we love. So for those of you, if you can't tell from the title of this episode, this is really an episode just getting to know who we are. So we're going to do it like question style. We're going to go <laughs> back and forth. Um, and we're just looking forward to having some fun with you guys. So again, thank you for tuning in to this episode. Yes. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Um, let's get this thing started off. I'm going to start off with the first question because um, mm -hmm. I got a question for you. Okay. And like I was saying earlier in our little intro, we're going to do this just a little back and forth style, kind of at random with questions. We have a list of questions that we know, that we have shared with each other for um, before our break today. And then we have a second set of questions for after our break today, guys, that neither of us knows what the other has written. So that's <laughs> going to be kind of fun because it's going to be just very, like, very candid. Um, so my first question for you is... Um, where is or what what would you say are your top two like favorite destinations like your travel places that you want to go to that you haven't been to yet um so number one on my list and anybody that's been around me or in my room or in my presence knows I am obsessed with Japan um Ooh, yes. so Tokyo would definitely be like my number one destination my favorite flower is cherry blossoms and I think it started because in elementary school, I took Japanese and I've just been obsessed ever huh. since. Yeah, you know, I know a little Japanese. Konnichiwa, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ichimi Sushi, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> but yeah, so definitely Tokyo. And then I really want to go to Trinidad because I've never been. Mm. And that's just like blasphemous for me to have never been to Trinidad. So yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> okay, well, for me... It's kind of similar for like with you in Japan is mine is Spain. Mm -hmm. So throughout high school and throughout like middle school and even at some point in elementary, I took like six or seven years of Spanish. Mm -hmm. And it's just something about Spanish culture that just fascinates me. Like I love the food. I love yeah, the fashion. Really I love they're really expressive people and people who know me know that I'm extremely animated. Um, <laughs> and then for them, like dinner starts at nine. And that's a meeting and like we're having dinner at nine and we're like rocking out till one o'clock in the morning just on <laughs> Wednesday. You know, like I just right. think that they have such a cool culture. Um, so Spain is one on my list, but the other on my list is Egypt. I just have Aww. a desire to go to Egypt and just to just experience everything that Egypt has to offer to see the pyramids, to see the Sphinx, like 
to be around the people. I think mm-hmm. it's just such a beautiful culture, the history of Egypt. But then just to know like how far that the, the country has come, the culture has come and how yeah. it has adapted. Just I, yeah, I would love to go to Egypt one day. I had actually, I was watching this guy on YouTube and he had did like a trip to U- Egypt with like a bunch of people or whatever. And he was actually saying like the pyramids is like, like that's, that's it. He was like, literally like <laughs> you look over here and it's like 10 houses and stuff like, like it's not. Oh wow. Yeah. And, but you know, a lot of those like tourist countries are like that where it's like the spots mm-hmm. that are important are super taken care of, but the people are still in poverty. Yeah, that's very true. Not to rain yeah, on Egypt's parade, no, but you know, yeah, still no. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely though. No, it's definitely still just, I mean, like, I just think that it's so rich in culture. And and even for yeah, me, I'm very. a foodie. You know, you know I'm a yes. foodie. I love, I want to experience all types of food from all around the world. Remember that time uh, I called which, you a bird <laughs> for eating a bunch of food? I don't know which time, because I'm pretty sure... <laughs> That was like there were so many times. <laughs> but it was like the first thing that so came many. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely bird. Oh, and then um fun fact, you know Aisha. Aisha mm-hmm. was born in Japan. That's where she spent oh, the beginning of her cool. life. So she also has like that like extreme love for Japan and she wants to go back. Absolutely. Yeah. So and okay. you know, I love sushi, so y'all we could totally make that a trip one day. Um <laughs> so yeah, next question is on you. Okay, so next question. Give me your favorite vacation memory. Ooh. Okay, so this one I don't have to think too much about because it just, it sticks with me um, as an aspiring musician, it sticks with me. And then just as like being part of it involving my family, it sticks with me. So I have a family that's very like, very close, very connected. And every two years, we're a big family. Mm-hmm. Every two years, we meet and there's, I mean, we come, like, family come from Jersey, from Detroit, from Tennessee, from Texas, from all over all these different parts of the country. And then we might come to Alabama, we might pick wherever we're going to go. And we do some type of family reunion trip together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've always had fun trips. But I remember one in particular um, that just really stuck with me as we went to Memphis and we got, you know, good barbecue. We ate good. But there was one night where um, it was my brother, um, one of my cousins and I, we were walking down um, Bill Street. And we were definitely, first of all, we were too young to be on Bill Street by ourselves. I'm not going to say how old we were. I'm not going to say how old we were, but we were definitely, um, now my cousin was old enough, but my brother Don't was expose the family. A, little, a little too young. My cousin was old enough, but we were just a little too young to be on Bill Street without an adult. So we had an adult to get us in. But what I remember about being on Bill Street was just seeing all of these Black people, which Mm -hmm. I loved. I loved just seeing all these people who looked like me. And there was live music. Yeah. And there was a singer, and she was singing um, this song called Sleep With One Eye Open, which I hadn't, like, like, that song was giving me my life. It was just (laughs) this amazing. And I just remember us having a drink and listening to, like, this live music. And it just being this moment where I've just felt absolute bliss. I wasn't thinking mm-hmm. about anything besides just being in the moment. Yeah. And I was with my brother and my that cousin in particular. She's like a sister to me. So it was just like family. And we were just chilling and we were just talking and having a good time and sharing a drink. And it was <laughs> it was everything. Yeah. What about you? It's really cool. Um, yeah. It, and the funny thing is the one when I went like we went to like a club, but it was like a it was like a thirty and up club that we didn't Mm. know but when I tell you we had so much fun in there (laughs) like we were tired and we like we were young so we was like the life of the party of course (laughs) but it was so fun (laughs) okay so my memory um well my favorite vacation memory is actually going to Mexico um I went on a cruise with Asia and a few of her friends and it was, I had so much fun. Like Mexico yes, was Mexico. so beautiful. The food is so good and fresh. Like it's fresh. Mm. They do try to like sell you everything in the world. Like they, <laughs> and it'd be the same person come back with a new rack of stuff. And it'd be like, <laughs> but funny story of something that happened to me. So we were all like, we were at the little um, destination spot on the beach or whatever. 
and they had like the the balloon slides. What are they called? I don't know what they're called. We're gonna call them balloon like a slides. water slide. A water like slide, blow, but it was the blow like up the, ones, like the blow up ones. Yeah, like yeah, the, okay, like they had they had like one that you could like sit on, but then they had like the slides and stuff. And so one of the girls that was with us, she wanted to get on the slide. And so we all go over there and she's like struggling to climb up on the thing. So we all like, okay, everybody like grab a spot and try to like steady it so she could get on the thing or whatever. I don't know what happened, but child, the slide went over my head. I was underwater. The slide was over me. So I couldn't get back out. Nobody saw it, but oh my so literally, I, I'm like in the ocean about to die. Like, oh my God, because I oh couldn't get goodness. back up because the freaking slide was over me. Thank God, Asia saw it. <laughs> but like, it's funny oh now, but like in the moment, like I probably like, I was about to die because <laughs> the water definitely oh, wow. went down my throat. Like it burned like a mug too. But it's funny now. Like it was funny then too. Like I ain't gonna lie. But it's crazy. Yeah, like the freaking slide went over my head. And I'm like, girl, mind you, she's tall. Like, girl, why you can't get on this <laughs> doggone thing? And here are my little self trying to help, trying to beat it. Because I was on the end of the slide. So, like, literally, I went, un- thank God I was on the end, though. Because <laughs> it wasn't much of it to cover me. But, like, it literally was over my head. And when I tried to come back up, I couldn't get up. I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> that is crazy. Oh, my God. Well, yes. I'm so glad you're okay. <laughs> Right. Um, I'm glad I didn't lose my friend. So you was gonna lose uh, me and Lori because I didn't even know I was pregnant then. That was another oh, wow. gag. So d- oh wow! Uh, I, and the funny so thing I is, did- I got sick on the trip, and I'm thinking like, because I'm like, I had lost weight, so I'm like, why am I bloated? Like my outfit's supposed to be busted. Child, didn't even know I was pregnant. <laughs> didn't even know. Dang! <laughs> and that's how it happens right there. That happens. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, so next question. Let's see. Well, you know, I'm a big movie buff. I love a good movie. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to make this an extremely difficult question. I'm not going to ask you your top five movies of all time. I'm going to say currently in life on this day in particular, mm-hmm. <laughs> what are your top five movies? Okay. Top five movies. No particular order. Okay. No particular order. Um, Breakfast at Tiffany's definitely is on the list. Mm. I love Audrey Hepburn. Yes, Audrey. Yes, yeah. Audrey. Okay, Audrey is all up and through my bedroom. <laughs> my my bathroom, <laughs> literally the theme of my bathroom is Breakfast at Tiffany's. That's how obsessed mm. I'm um, Second movie I'm going to have to go with is What's Love Got to Do With It? Yes, that's on my you. list too. <laughs> yes. That is my movie for like all the right and wrong reasons because mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. supposed to be funny, but it is At hilarious. All. Okay. So definitely got to put that on the list. Um, next on the list, I'm going to have to go with Toy Story. Mm, I I know point. that whole movie by heart since I was a child. I watched That's Toy Story one. literally like every week still <laughs> and now Alori is obsessed with it so yes definitely gotta go with Toy Story um next on the list I feel like I should pick something serious so that I can mm. sound like I care but going, <laughs> I'm really just going off the dome off this of like because I have a lot you know I'm a movie person so yes you are you're like me. we love we love <laughs> right movies. like I could go all day listing movies um so number four I'm going to go with Liar Liar because when I was a kid, okay. I freaking love Jim Carrey, first of all. Like, and when I was a kid, that movie was so, I would cry laughing watching that movie. Like, I own that movie <laughs> right <laughs> now. Like, I own that movie. Like, I love Jim Carrey. He is um, a comedic genius. Like, he's he absolutely is. genius. He absolutely. Is. And then, fifth, I'm going to go with. Friday because okay. me and That's my another sister good one, yeah. when we were kids would literally we would watch Friday every Friday that was just our thing <laughs> like, okay especially when I'm my mom it. would go out with her friends like okay we better watch Friday <laughs> <laughs> eat some pizza watch some Friday and fall asleep <laughs> yes yeah, nice little 90s classic at the end love right. that um well for me I feel like my top five it, at any time it just changes Right. But currently today, um, 
and they're so different um in no particular order apocalypto i don't know if you've ever seen apocalypto (laughs) but that is and it's a foreign language film i want to say like mel gibson produced it but it's like the story of like this native american tribe Mm -hmm. and in particular jaguar paw is like the main oh my gosh you've got to see it it's so good now the whole movie is in a foreign language you you do have to read the subtitles and funny story my mom watched this movie the other day and she was like, you know what I did? And I was like, what'd you do, mom? She's like, I watched that movie, Apocalypto. And I didn't understand a single thing they said the whole movie, but I watched it to the end. It was so good. I said, mom, why didn't you put subtitles on it? She was like, you know what? I didn't even think about it. I was just so into the movie. I was like, mom, you're supposed to watch it with subtitles. So you know what they're saying. What's happening. Like, she, it probably didn't even happen the way she thought, but she's but like, you know what? That's a no. good idea. <laughs> It's that kind of movie that, like, honestly, if you were to watch it without subtitles Mm -hmm. and you were to just be fully immersed into what they're doing, you would be able to piece together exactly what the conversation is like and what's going on. So it made sense that she was able to watch it and enjoy it without the subtitles, but it really, the subtitles Mm -hmm. add so much more context. Um, Then, of course, Selena. Um, Uh, I love love Selena. I own that movie. I do too. I, it's right here, right beside me. I love Selena, yes. one of my favorite movies of all time. I love Selena, the artist. She was yes. amazing, amazing, incomparable. I mean, just such a beautiful voice, such a beautiful talent. And I mean, the world absolutely lost her way too soon. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorites. Uh, then also, like I said, what's love got to do? With it? <laughs> but because I'm not going to, I'm not going to repeat, I'm not going to repeat so that we give another, but it, what's love got to do with it is absolutely a movie I watch right. and every day. I love that movie <laughs> so much. And you got to hit me but what? It's got like three of my all time favorite performers um, and entertainers. You've got Angela Bassett as Tina Turner, killing it. Very. Lawrence Fishburne as Ike Turner, even though he looked nothing like Ike, Lawrence killed it <laughs> and then jennifer lewis jennifer oh lewis did everything everything that's my favorite entertainer of all time by the way like i <laughs> love everything jennifer lewis does i mean like okay yeah i'm gonna get off my soapbox but um yeah but it, since i'm not gonna say what's love got to do with it because you said that one in place of it i'm gonna go with waiting to exhale oh such an amazing movie so many one-liners and monologues and good like good quotes from that movie um uh, I just love the the performances (laughs) and then an amazing soundtrack on top of it uh and then it's kind of a tie for me when it comes to like Disney because I love Hercules and I also love Lion King and Mm -hmm. they kind of like tie for me so okay. I'm gonna just put them, I'm gonna like cheat and put them as a tie for number four. <laughs> just kind of like right there with each other. And then because I'm a huge Marvel nerd and it was such a big deal for me seeing this movie um, and because it created so many, or it was a big point, um, a, a, a major point in the story for a lot of the other major Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Black Panther was absolutely, it yeah. ha- it's still like, I have that movie too. I love Black Panther. So good. I mean, i you know, I'd be remiss if I just, while, while we have the opportunity, just say that Chadwick Boseman was a true gift. Absolutely. Um, we, rest in peace. In, rest in peace. Everything that he was able to get done while battling, like, for his life. I just think it really speaks to the strength of his character and the strength of, of his power, his willpower. So, um, yeah, Black Panther. So those are my top five. <laughs> I mean, like, I, yeah, crazy. Did you do that or I did that? <laughs> is, is it my turn um, yeah, it's your turn. Okay, so let's go with your top three seafood dishes. Let's go food. Ooh, okay. Yes. Oh, yes. I love seafood. Um, so I'm going to exclude fried fish from this because because who cares? That's it's just trash. understood. It's not trash. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm from a, I'm from the the south where fried fish is like. Y'all like, love y'all some catfish. It, love, a, <laughs> but I mean, I love catfish. I love sway. I like a good if it's cooked right. Some tilapia, some salmon. Like you know, we I love fried fish, but I'm taking fried fish out of it because that's pretty basic for the south. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say gumbo for sure is one okay. of my top. I love a good seafood gumbo because um, I love soups and I'm really weird. I also mm. love eating. I love. I know you don't like soup. <laughs> I know you're not a big soup person. <laughs> 
Um, it's flavored it's hot water. Like it's, it's tea. But gumbo <laughs> is not. But gumbo is not because it's not really a thin watery soup. It yeah. is. It's based off of a root. It's so thick. Yeah, it's it, it is a root. I'll give it that. It, yeah, it's so amazing. The flavor, if it's done right, is phenomenal. And then all the textures that you get from the vegetables and the seafood and, you know, just everything. And it, it just gives me my life. So gumbo, um, in my household and in my family, shrimp and grits are huge. So we love a good shrimp and grits moment. Um, and I'm actually known for whipping up a good little, you know, Cajun black and <laughs> shrimp sauce can pull it all together with maybe a little four cheese, a little four cheese grits on the side, you know, like I'm, I'm known for that. Um, yeah. And a good crab boil. Now I'm not always the biggest fan of eating crab, mm -hmm. but I love the, the flavor of the seafood when it comes to like the corn and the potatoes and yeah. the sausage and everything else that just gets soaked in all those flavors and juices. Like it's just, <laughs> it's, it just, Yes, crab boil. Whenever I hear you week. talk about food, I realize how picky of an eater I am because I don't like grits because You're such they're a gritty. Picky eater. Like it's so <laughs> stupid to me. And I don't like <laughs> corn on the cob. I think that's stupid. It's so stupid to me. And I hate how it gets in your teeth. Like nobody has time for that. Like, and I just feel stupid eating oh. it. Like, I feel so bad. <laughs> you know how in the cartoons where they used to be like, yeah, yeah, when they see the car. Yeah. On the I, yeah. They definitely would. No, they, uh, that was perfect. First of all, that sound effect. Come on now, hidden talent. Right? Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> Anybody need a voice actor, call me. <laughs> and it's weird because I love corn. Like, I, I mean, it can be on the cob. I don't really care. Um, but like, there's this dish. I mean, side topic, because like I said before, I'm a foodie. But like street <laughs> corn, I love, there's this um, Mexican street corn mm -hmm. that is, it's got this amazing cheese in it and you get a little cilantro and, you know, they throw a little tahini in there and yeah. you get like that, you know, like it, a little lime juice, it's perfect. And then the, the corn is just like slightly charred. It's, it just gives me all of yeah. my life. Um, but it yeah, can also be served on the cob. We used to make cob. it, but we didn't make it on the cob. It was in like a little bowl. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen it. I've had it both ways and I've, I've en I enjoy it. I like corn. I'm weird. Mm -mm, I can't Maybe I'm not. That. Maybe you're the one who's weird because you don't like corn. I just don't see it for corn. I don't get it. Like, I mean, I guess if it's street <laughs> corn, like it's doctored up, but like to just be like, oh, I want some corn. Like, no. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> oh my goodness. I cannot. <laughs> okay, so I'm I know that you don't really do seafood, um, but for those who don't know, you are a vegetarian. I am. So what are your like top three veggie meals? Okay, so it's really the funny thing about being vegetarian is like technically we kind of eat the same stuff. We just replace the meat with something else. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would have to say, so one of my favorites is like a new obsession that I have and it's the falafel gyros. They are okay. so good. Cause I used to love those. Like when I, we, when I lived in Milwaukee, we would, um, go and get them all the time, but I was eating meat at that time. So it was just regular old little baby lamb, little baby lamb, little baby <laughs> lamb. <laughs> but yeah. And I love that, that Greek sauce. <sighs> I love Greek food. Like the Greek salad is busting. Yes. Greek salad dressing, baklava, like mm, yes. home down baklava. Like yes. love it. Um, I love making vegan tacos because I love tacos. It's mm -hmm. really it don't even count because I'm just gonna name my favorite foods that I eat in vegan. But that's okay. <laughs> it does count because but I I'll love never tacos. Forget. I'll never oh, forget I that made time. those nuggets. For, I mean those yeah. buffalo tenders you for y'all. I do remember the buffalo tenders, but that's not what I was going to talk about. Oh, okay. I was going to talk about the nachos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did make nachos. You did. Like, you, did. you made loaded nachos. I did. Using, like, beans. And it was I did, like, everything. I think beans and, like, peppers and onions. Peppers, and roast. Onions. I hooked mine up, though. Yeah, like, it was I, really good. Because even when people make tacos, like, if your taco meat is just taco meat, like, I just feel like you can't cook. Like, if I don't even you see can't. a little piece mm -hmm. of onion or something in there, like, you can't cook. Come on now. <laughs> Where's the substance? And I love Come me on. a good. I love. Look, I start off all my meat meals with minced garlic because I love me some garlic. Me so. too. Minced garlic, <laughs> onion, and a little bit of butter, and it, the kitchen will smell like you really cooking. Okay. Like, 
that's 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 the beginning of every meal okay so that's two. Oh, and then i love me a good good beyond burger let me tell you i don't know if you've ever had a beyond burger before i don't know Mm-mm. if you've ever had um slutty vegan i think they use the beyond meat to do their burgers too but okay when i tell you if you're ever in the store and you see a pack of either the beyond burgers or beyond little meat like ground meat get you some when i say it tastes exactly like a grilled burger like Mm. a good grill like it just it tastes like it just came off the grill they are i don't know if it's maybe how i cook it but it tastes like i might have to try that off the grill they are and they're juicy like regular burgers like so you can't taste the difference you really can't and my thing I had with, the um you know the impossible the impossible um whopper yeah. that they did. I had the impossible whopper the and impossible I thoroughly whopper is enjoyed actually it. Really good. But I the beyond enjoyed the it. beyond is burger better than the impossible. Okay. Beyond the beyond burgers are better than impossible burgers. So what are they made with? Like what is the beyond made with versus because I know like the impossible is like I know there's like beans and like different things you can see the texture if you like really look at I it. I ain't never looked you at it. And saw what it said. <laughs> I'm happy to I look just at know it. it I wanna... So I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> hey, right. Look. <laughs> that's what's important for you. I and I know really it's good. That. So because even beyond though I'm vegetarian, you know I am not the healthiest eater. So I just be like, is it good? <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Because the only reason, the thing with meat for me is like, I never was like a super big fan of most meat anyway. Like I don't like barbecue. I don't really see it for seafood. Like I was like a chicken tender burger kid, like, or like fried chicken. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. really pressed. And then even with fried chicken, I only like the skin. Like the inside is basic. <laughs> so it's like, mm. <laughs> Like meat is basic unless it's seasoned, and it's like I can mm-hmm. season like fake meat the same way, and it's going, you know. But don't get me wrong; be careful what brands you picking up because some of them ain't good. This is very true. <laughs> please do your pray. research. <laughs> Look, please do your research. Do your googles, please. Yes, do your googles, please. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, okay. so let's see. I think it's back on me. Okay. Um, you were just talking about being um not the healthiest of eaters mm-hmm. and. I know that we both have junk food obsessions. Yes. So what are your favorite snacks? Like, give me like your top five. Like if you were going to be stranded on an the island, they said, we're going to give you five. You get five choices of snacks mm-hmm. that you can take with you. <laughs> what are going to be the five things in the bag? So you already know I'm having some some form of hot Cheeto. You know right. I'm having Hello. some form now. of a flaming hot, the hot Cheeto. Because yes. ever since the, well, before, before Cheeto came out with their flaming hot, up north we had there, there was this brand jays and this brand curly's like they had hot cheetos before mm-hmm. hot cheetos came out and so yes, i just love a good hot chip you know what I'm saying? Yeah. but any form of hot chip i'm down for the cause i'm with that definitely gotta have that definitely gotta have some pop tarts because why mm. not like but not the pop tart brand because pop tart brand has the thinnest Uh, lamest pop tarts ever created i actually like the off brand pop tarts better because they're thicker there's more filling yeah so and then no no there's actually more like more breading i mean the the, the pastry the pastry yeah yeah and so let's see where would i go to reese's i gotta have my reese's because yes reese's freaking love reese's those are like my favorite chocolate even though i'm allergic to chocolate i'm allergic to hot chips too but i don't care oh (laughs) goodness i I think i'm allergic to like the whatever makes the the bread the the dye i can't Mm -hmm. eat red candy or drink red juice and stuff but you know me i do it anyway Um, (laughs) then i gotta go with my trolley sour worms yes got to. yes <laughs> absolutely I to go with my trolley sour worms those things are busting give me whatever flavor i don't care um and then last i'm gonna go oh i'm so fat this is hard <laughs> like we gotta cut the list off that's why i did five i was like that's gonna be even harder because <laughs> i know it's gonna be hard for me to come up with five <laughs> okay five i'm gonna go the the vanilla oreo 
Oh, I love the because video, yeah. I already put the Reese's in there, and I'm allergic to chocolate, and I ain't trying to just be out here on the island just on the island dying. So right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with the the vanilla Oreos because those are actually really busting. Like, don't sleep, don't sleep. I live for them. The oh, they call them the golden, the golden, golden Oreo. Me. Yeah, I like the golden. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so my five. Oh. Well, I definitely have to have some kind of hot chip. I'm a big chip head. Like, I love chips. So, usually it's flaming Hot or the extra, extra flaming Hot. Mm-hmm. Um, those I have to those have... extreme hot Cheetos are so good. They're so good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then what was the other one I had? Now, I had one recently that I wasn't a fan of. There's a couple of the, the flaming Hot flavors, like the Chipotle Ranch. I wasn't the biggest fan. No. Nah. Um, mm-hmm. But there was a queso that I had that was not too bad. I just wouldn't want a big bag of them. I would want a mm. small bag. They weren't the, like, okay. But not I stick to the classics. Cheeto hot fry and now Dorito. <laughs> and that, that Dorito yes, lime? Ooh. That Dorito. Oh, and the, the Dorito lime is good. I had the Dorito <laughs> lime. It's good. I got me an um, accent right there. <laughs> yeah. Now, my classic, my go-to classic, I even have a bag of them next to me right now, is it's an Alabama brand, Golden Flake. Golden Flake dill pickle chips are mm. everything. I love dill pickle chips. They're like my favorite. Um, let's see. That's two. Dill are, dill, those dill are really good. I like the dill I and the salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar, yes. But they leave absolutely. your tongue feeling kind of raw. <laughs> a little, yeah, you'd be a little numb now. Like I, I would caution. <laughs> I would caution during COVID season so you don't scare yourself like I did. Um. Now my new favorite snack. I'm I've never been a big chocolate eater because it used to trigger migraines for me. But mm. I will kill some of the little Dove chocolate, little just little chocolates from Dove. <laughs> yeah, they're so creamy and they're like the best little milk chocolate. It's just so good. It's like yeah. so good. Um, I think that puts me at what four. I think I'm at four. Um, and then finally, oh. Uh, it's got to be a, some type of gummy worm. It's got to be a trolley <laughs> or a, a Go hair put that trolley in there. Look, Listen, ain't nobody got trolley. nothing on trolley. It's got to be the trolley. It ain't the same but if I will it tell ain't trolley. You, nobody's those... got anything on Haribo's gummy bears. Nobody. No, 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 no. Have you ever had the Black Forest organic ones? Oh, I love the Black Forest Busted. organic ones. And then, I don't know if you've ever been to the Smithsonian, but the Smithsonian has the best pack of gummy bears I've ever had in my life. Don't know who uh-huh. made them. Don't know where they came from, but they just in a little pack, and they got like the flavors are different from what come in the packs that you buy at the store. Okay, mm-hmm. now there is this new brand of gummy bears that I started eating recently, and I can't remember what they're called, but it's something to the effect of like the Gourmet Gummy Bear Company or something like that. It's Some something extra. real, <laughs> some real extra. But they are the, those are the ones that have actually talked here about, and I don't mind spending a little extra money. And I can only find it usually at like TJ Maxx or yeah. somewhere <laughs> like that. It's a really, like I live for them. They're, those are really good. Like, But Black Forest, you're right. Black Forest be like, Black Forest has some be on it. Gummies. Yeah, they're gummies. They're, they're definitely on it. Um, but yeah, that's my top five. Uh, I think okay. next question's on you. Let's go, let's do something a little different. Give me Uh-oh. your top traits in a partner. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, well, first of all, I don't like people, so let me can we stop. Same. Okay. So <laughs> listen, you already know. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> uh like that's the hard thing about me and a partner, is that's mm-hmm. when it's like, oh, this is you gotta factor in all, another person's it's- whole personality. Right. So for me, we have to be pretty similar. Not like a like, not a like, because mm-hmm. that's not what I'm looking for. But we have to be pretty similar, like a prospective partner and I. So I need someone who's like ambitious, has some kind of like drive. Um, I need someone who's creative or understands creativity, because I've been around people who are so like analytical or so quantitative with their mind that they can't mm-hmm. understand the abstract. So they're so focused mm-hmm. on logic that the abstract doesn't make sense to them. And I need someone who can like dive deep let's go abstract like just get (laughs) real creative like I need that type of mental stimulation um oh what else honesty I mean obviously Mm -hmm. uh and then like I think for me because 
I am surrounded by, I have a circle of people, of close friends who we have such intelligent conversations where I would consider us intellectuals. I mean, like we really, we don't just have like basic, ordinary, you know, random ABC chats. Like even on, when we're not on, you know, the pod, we have deep conversations. And I just need someone who is intelligent enough to be able to understand words like extrapolate, you know, who can understand (laughs) vocabulary, even if they don't know the word, but to be able to use like context clues. Like I just need someone who uses, because I'm not saying I need someone who's got degrees or someone who is all about like their formal education but mm-hmm. I need you gotta be able to someone keep up. Who, you got to be able to keep up you have to have a desire to want to keep up yeah if you can't like you gotta be like okay I can't keep up I want to keep up let me learn right um, right <laughs> <laughs> you know like and then I just like I'm trying to if I if I end up with a partner in the future like I want someone where we're gonna be like a power couple we're building an empire where yes. I need someone who wants to take over the world as much as I do so Very. that's what I'm looking for <laughs> Right, come on no. now, where you at? Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, look, we're gonna send out a search party for you. Okay. But, um, <laughs> what about you, D? Like, what's what's ideal in a partner for you? Like, traits? okay, so it's actually changed for me um, now that I've really been doing some like work on myself and really understanding myself. So what I want has actually changed and I'm I'm dramatically actually. So Mm -hmm. one of the things that's like most important for me, like I'm very, you know, I'm a giver. Like I'm one of those people where it's it's like not something I think about or consciously Mm -hmm. do. Like if somebody needs something, I'm just like, okay. Like if I got it, it's like, okay, cool. Like I got you. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? And I'm, I'm very, like, I'm a nurturer. I, love taking care of other people and I've realized I need somebody who's the same who will take care of me because I pour Mm -hmm. so much into other people and sometimes I forget about myself and I just need somebody to like scoop me up like chunky monkey and just be like I got you (laughs) don't worry yeah help them but I got you you know what I'm saying so that's Mm -hmm. definitely important for me um communication I just I just I was oh, just dealing that. with some <laughs> some toxic masculinity with this I'm protect provide I don't talk about my problems I don't burden you with my problems and it's like sir you do realize I feel your energy I care about you so I know when something's not right whether you tell me or mm-hmm. not I can feel it mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying I can feel it through text messages I know when something's off you not mm-hmm. telling me isn't helping anybody anything or Come anything and it's and you know they was all oh you what you and my therapist that it's not about me trying to solve your problems it's about you trusting me mm-hmm. to support you allowing me to support you because if you want me to be because you know me I'm like miss do it myself so for me to even mm-hmm. let somebody provide for me is a step for me so if I can if I can take a step back with my pride and my ego and allow you to pay for stuff and do this that, and the third meet me halfway you know what I'm right. saying like communicate communicate don't don't lash <laughs> out and I don't know what's going on communicate um loyalty is very important because <laughs> I'm one of those people I'm loyal to a fault like I'm gonna have your back unless you just you know f over me and then you know that's a whole other story <laughs> but for the most part even if you wrong I'm gonna tell you you wrong in private but I'm gonna have your but back I got your back regardless, yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. so that's very loyalty is very important to me um and somebody who's fun I love to have fun I like you got to be funny I play too much so you got to have a sense of humor like I gotta be able to joke with you wherever we at like I need that I need to be able to like play and harass you and you not be like oh my god like Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah definitely and that's yeah very that he's gonna have to have a sense (laughs) he's gonna have to have a very like I think his sense of humor might even have to be like a little bit more than yours like Because you have such a, and I love it, a, such a high level of energy and just such, oh, like, you always just put people at ease. Well, some yeah. people, if, <laughs> if, 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 listen, and I'm going to say some people, because real recognize real. Hello? <laughs> and when fake, and when fake is in the atmosphere, it gets shook when you're around. Look, it gets shook, it gets shook when you're I'll be so, ruffling feathers, honey. <laughs> real people, those who are real are 
immediately at ease around someone like you. So, um, yeah, you need someone who's going to be able to need to keep up with you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then same with like the whole, like, you know me, I'm into like different things. And it's like, I need somebody who's like, like a reformed thug because it's like, I'm a little rough around the edges, <laughs> but I'm educated and I'll be into like other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not really, I'm very, very multidimensional. Like it's mm-hmm. nothing that I am into fits together. Nothing fits in a box together. So I need somebody who can like keep up and be able to like tell me when I'm tripping, check me when I'm tripping. But at the same time, like I want to be able to do like weird fun stuff with you too. Like you can't be mm-hmm. too hood to where you think you too cool for everything. <laughs> I like that reform <laughs> thug. Now that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But that's what I can think of off the top of my head, you know. Hmm. Well, let's see. Um. Now, you did talk a little bit about, like, hobbies and things that you're into. So, like, what are your hobbies, your interests, your passions? Like, what are some of those things? Um. Well, I love watch. I'm, like, a movie, movie person. I love movies and TV shows because I was in theater my whole life. I was obsessed with cinematography. I wanted to be a cinematographer. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to do it all. Um, so I definitely catch in movies all the time. And at one point before like the quarantine, I was pretty consistent with it. But now, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Um, right. <laughs> and then I love sports. Um, I love basketball. I used to play yes, basketball. You do. So I love. Yeah, I love me some basketball. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. <laughs> um let's see what else am I in why do I not know what I'm into <laughs> why do I have to think about it? <laughs> it's like we know unless somebody asks us right? I completely get it I am a cannabis connoisseur so you know yes connoisseur <laughs> I mean we love today. that over here on these streets right <laughs> right I love, you know trying Hashtag new things you know <laughs> You know, getting into new flavors, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to say it is like politically correct. I know you are. That's what's so funny. <laughs> That's what's so funny about it. Didn't I make it sound real intelligent, though? Like, I right. love new flavors, you know, new right. aromas. <laughs> like, we wine taste it. <laughs> the various methods of procurement, you know. Right. <laughs> Um, and actually, one of my new favorite hobbies is, like, watching, like, comedy sketches and stuff. I love mm. kind of just watching, you know, comedians work. It's so crazy how, like, you ever see somebody that's super funny, you just be like, how the heck do you think of this? Like, where is your mm-hmm. brain? Like, how do you even yeah. up with this stuff? Like, that's how yeah. I feel about people like Eddie Murphy. Like, Eddie Murphy doing Nutty Professor, sitting at the table by himself doing all... I'm by like, himself doing all those crazy? characters. <laughs> Like, right. How do you think of this, or like Martin with his random characters on the show. It's like who thinks of Dragonfly Jones? Like who comes up with this stuff? <laughs> like, Very bad. <laughs> like who's jumping on mailboxes? And stuff? Like he's crazy. Like I love. Or like Robin Williams. It's like people like that. It's like, I, yeah, I was just about to say Robin Williams. Where's your brain? Absolutely. Like <laughs> Mrs. You Doubtfire. What? Yes. What was that? What was that? Like what, what I are love you it. About? <laughs> so no, I, that's, that's kind of one of my new things that I've been super into. My okay. sound so lame. They do not. But I'll be doing nothing really. I just be chilling. <laughs> I like hanging out with my friends and just chilling and being a kind right. connoisseur. You know, that's pretty. Yeah, cool. it's kind of sore. I love just the way connoisseur just flows off the tongue. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I guess for me, hobbies wise, like as you know, I'm big into music. Um, okay. I love. I'm a songwriter. I'm a singer. I love singing. Um, I write all the time. It's like my my prayer, my expression. Um, I'm big into fashion and that's something that's like developed over the past couple of years is Mm -hmm. I've been a stylist now for two years and taken on a job where you were kind of labeled a stylist loosely, but then it's really up to you to like make it what you make it. And so now I actually- That's how you make your money. Look, that's how you make (laughs) your money. I miss it. I ain't gonna lie. I kind of miss it. Look, I mean, like, I don't know, like now I feel like I'm performing the best I've ever performed in Mm -hmm. fashion. Yeah. Um, and that just feels really cool. I've gotten like some opportunities to work with some people exclusively outside of the job. So mm-hmm. that's always, you know, I just, and fashion is something I could just see myself really taking a little yeah. bit further down the line. Um, 
uh what else i love i love listening to to podcasts and audiobooks mm -hmm. i have like a i have a pretty long commute to work every day so <laughs> I tend to be on listening to some podcasts, if not ours, because I'll definitely listen to ours sometimes on the way to work. <laughs> but I'll be listening to some podcast or an audiobook. I just finished um Coretta Scott King's memoir. I'm oh. listening to I'm listening to the autobiography of uh, Malcolm X now. Mm -hmm. And it's it's being um performed by Lawrence Fishburne. Because like I said oh. before, I'm a big Lawrence Fishburne fan. I actually own um, that but, book. Does that it's make me good. super black? Hey, black yes. power. <laughs> <Right> power. <laughs> um, and what else? Oh, skincare. I'm really big into skincare and I, I love um like fragrances and mm -hmm. like I, I'm just I'm I'm actually working on my own little you know, skincare brand. Little don't don't whisper burnt. about it. Let them know what <laughs> a little, tea a little is something on it. Play, you know, I might have a little skincare company. Um, and no might, it's know, coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's going to open the doors in, in, a, in, a, in a little while. But um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, and I also, I, I kind of, one thing that I do in my spare time is I, I get the opportunity. I've been given the opportunity to to mentor some people. Mm -hmm. And so I have people who reach out to me and, you know, who ask questions or look for advice or, you know, just need to sometimes vent and just be heard. And for me, um, as an empath, <laughs> that is, it gives me an opportunity to feel like I'm actually making a difference in some people's lives. Um, and so like, that's, that's, that's a hobby, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. It's something that I do weekly. Um, a book you but, should read um, that I have on my Audible is The Big Leap. It's, it's good. And it basically talks about how we make decisions out of fear. Like mm. a lot of our decisions are usually rooted in being afraid of something else happening. So it's like if you've been like, let's say when you were a child, you were homeless. When you become an adult, you've held on to that fear. So a lot of the decisions you make as an you adult, and our, even with black people, like we have it, yeah. that scarcity mindset because we make our decisions out of fear because we're used to not having. At least those mm -hmm. of us that live in those type of, you know, right, like me, <laughs> which is why I was into the book. <laughs> wow. Okay. The big leap. I'm going to have to check that yeah. out. Did you do well, that one um, or did I do that one? Um, I did that one. Okay. I, yeah, I did that one. Okay. So give me your favorite fashion brands. Ooh, Mr. Stylist. Okay. Yes. Um... <laughs> It's weird because I don't actually have many favorite brands. Um, I do have like a little handful of okay. brands that I really like. Um, there's uh, now, right now, the, one of the big things in fashion that's been circulating all over mm -hmm. social media is Ivy Park, um, Cross Adidas. So mm -hmm. Beyonce's collaboration and that project. And I love the pieces in that. Um, and I'm a big fan of, I, I like when artists collaborate with brands like that. So one brand that I um, like is Steve Madden. Um, I really mm -hmm. like the fact that Steve Madden was kind of founded on the principles of music and was founded to be a music brand. Mm -hmm. And so I own probably 10 pairs of Steve Madden <laughs> shoes. Like it's, it's pretty, <laughs> at least 10, it's pretty ridiculous. And I have, I actually have one pair of shoes that I have the same pair of shoes in maybe just four different colors, mm -hmm. but it's the exact same pair of shoes. Like I, I <laughs> I like Steve Madden. Um, I like the style of the shoe. In most cases, they're really comfortable. Um, so that's one of my favorite fashion brands. Um, I've recently just gotten into Levi's, but I not just like normal Levi's. I like going into their little denim lab and customizing <laughs> me a pair. So I have I have a custom pair of Levi's that are like my favorite jeans. Um, and so that's shoes. I like my Levi's jeans. There's a brand, um, for those people who know me personally, you know that I wear all types of clothes. I don't believe in the gendering of fashion. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a big fan of Free People. And Free okay. People is super expensive. They do have brand, some cute stuff. But they have like all of these really like boho-y things. Yeah. I have all these cool jackets. I have cool boots from Free People. I have... Um, I've actually got some skincare from their company. Um, so it's a really cool company as far as like the type of things, the type of products that they release. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said before, I'm pretty big into fragrances. One of my favorites um, or a couple of my favorites come from Versace. I love a good Versace <laughs> cologne. It's a little mist, a little, you know, a little spray. Keep my day going. Um, yeah, I love a little, I love a little Versace. So um those are, pro and then, oh, finally, I have to call out this brand, even though I haven't gotten any of it yet, 
-hmm. it's definitely aspirational um the Fenty brand the high end the high end like luxury Fenty brand Mm -hmm. I'm just so impressed with her vision um Rihanna is like impressed with her I'm impressed with everything (laughs) that she does like literally I feel like she is just one of the queens when it comes to business when it comes to everything that she does when she touches it it's gold um I have her skincare I've got some shoes that she designed with Puma. Mm-hmm. I've got many of her albums, and mm-hmm. that's one of the things that I'm missing. <laughs> like, I, so um, yeah, the the Fenty, the big Fenty collection through um the luxury houses. That is my final one on there. <laughs> um, what about you? Because I know that you like it's not even a little little known fact. Anyone who knows you knows that you love sneakers. So I, I know do. that that's got to be you. Got to have at least one sneaker brand on there. Okay. So I do and I, I cut well I do and I don't. So Okay. Um I well since you brought that up, I will say Fila is one of I love mm. like their not only their sneakers, because I love like the different colorways and the different styles of their sneakers, but also their sweatsuits. They have oh, yeah. some of the flyest, you know, I'm a 90s <laughs> girl, so a lot uh-huh. of this stuff is gonna sound super outdated, but I don't care because I wear what I want to wear. Just like how y'all started back wearing Champion, like it wasn't in Payless, but whatever. Um, (laughs) Right, and Walmart. And Walmart, Walmart, okay. (laughs) But yeah, um, I really, really love Fila. Um, Anybody that knows me knows, like, I'm not really, like, a purse kind of girl. But if you know me, you know the only thing I'm really messing with is (laughs) my girl, Betsy Johnson, okay? Yes, Miss Betsy. Betsy. I love me a good Betsy. Okay, my diaper bag for Lori is Betsy. Every bag I own, <laughs> wallet, it's all Betsy. Okay, I yes. freaking love her. She's so dope. I love her energy, and I love the stuff that she creates. And it's crazy because her her line is so girly, and I'm so not, but I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> like I love me a good, good Betsy. Um, next I'm gonna go. You know what? I'm gonna take it on back again because. Really, for me, I don't really have favorite brands. I really have like favorite styles. So, okay, another I'm brand that. that's like super that I like is Fubu. Fubu has some of the flyest. Yes, Fubu. <laughs> the flyest. Yes, Listen, I remember my first Fubu, like, um, what are they called? It was like windbreaker material, but it was like the matching set. And mm-hmm. it was dark navy blue, and it had the FUBU outlines in red. It was, so, like, <laughs> when I tell you I went to school, like, hey, I'm about to come stun on everybody. <laughs> like, And then, you know what I'm saying, when we were kids, like, mind you, we had got that out the JCPenney outlet, so saving. And then, like, yes, when we saving. were kids, sometimes me and Brittany would have, like, some of the similar stuff, but in different colors, because my mom was like, you know, we were like ghetto twins. You know how, you know how <laughs> in the black mm-hmm. community you know how they do that and so <laughs> when, when Brittany grew out of her she had like a sky blue one so then when she grew out of hers then I came through with that one I was like so definitely FUBU like I don't care what nobody say I can't wait for FUBU to come back because FUBU has mm-hmm. some fly stuff yes FUBU and then where do I want to you did fragrances so I'm going to do fragrances I love Calvin Klein Calvin okay. Klein makes some really particularly I love euphoria and endless euphoria but Calvin Klein makes some bomb scents for men and women I love their fragrances like I, I think I've smelled like euphoria Gucci, it Gucci, does smell but, really good you know Gucci got canceled right so. look I, <laughs> yeah I, I, I refuse and since we since since we're talking about a couple canceled brands I feel like it's important for us to maybe list just a few of them for our people who don't know Gucci is one of those brands guys like if you don't know, just look it up. Look up. Look up right. what Gucci did. Um, Tommy Hilfiger is one of those brands, guys. And I you know. hate it because Tommy Hilfiger was so like. And I ain't even gonna sit here in front. Like I don't still have a Tommy Hilfiger hoodie because I do. I do. I was given a <laughs> gift of Tommy Hilfiger, and I mean, I I've worn it because it was a gift from someone who cares about me. You know, mm-hmm. it's from my brother. So I was like, yeah, my brother doesn't really give a whole lot of gifts. So yeah, I'm <laughs> you know, I'm aware of this because my brother got right. this for me. But, but if I you was don't like, want to fool with Tommy, Tommy go look, check out Fila. Okay. Come on now. Same colors. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure that you're supporting right. people who support you. Don't just buy it because of the brand, guys. Right. And no. then definitely, of <laughs> course, I gotta go Nike because 
I used to sit, mm. like I literally used to sit in my computer class in middle school and I would sit on Nike ID on all the whole class period and just make shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I would save all of them and I would sneak and print them out. And I had like, I literally had a binder. I think I still have it at my, I think it might still be at my mom's house, but I had a binder and I had like, I literally put them in the, um, what are they called? The protective things, the protective the little covers. The um, sheet protectors. The yeah, little those little, ones. yeah. I, I literally had like a binder that you could just flip through and look at the shoes that <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's like look at my catalog check me yes, out because i'm like i'm like oh when i when i get when i grow up i'm gonna have so much money i'm gonna buy my shoes i'm gonna have all my shoes <laughs> look this is how this is how i know we're so much alike because that triggered a memory of mine so for me it wasn't nike but for me it was converse because okay. converse had the same little kind of lab and i would go on there and i had like eight shoes that mm. I had created and they were all saved like because I have like maybe four or five pair of Converse Chuck yeah. Taylor's now but it was like I used to go in there and like customize my little Converse like I'm gonna have <laughs> all these one day shout uh, out to Converse crazy. the first basketball sneaker shout out to them yes yes Converse <laughs> <laughs> is it my did you, did I do that? um I think I yeah you did that, that one that was um fashion brands okay so before I break we're gonna do one more. Okay. Ooh, let's see. Let's see. I'm <laughs> gonna give you a tough one. Um, your top seven musicians today, and we're using today okay. again instead of all time. Because, just because it changes. All, yes, it changes. It's, so it's, we'll say in this current space, in this current headspace, in this current time, um, what are your top seven musicians? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and get the, this first one out of the way so that y'all can go ahead and judge me and call me a hypocrite. I already said I was a hypocrite. Y'all know I'm a hypocrite. I'm going to go ahead and get the first one out of the way. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Is, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are, are, I'm sorry. I but I can't sit here and lie and be fake with y'all. I love Michael Jackson's music. I have been a fan of his since I was a kid. I literally grew up on Michael Jackson. So it's literally just a part of my childhood. It's kind of hard to get rid of that. So call me what you want. I'm owning it. I'm standing <laughs> in it. <laughs> okay. I called myself that before you did. You can't shame me if I'm standing in my truth. Boom. Come on now. There it is. <laughs> so next I'm going to have to go with black. I freaking okay. love black. Okay. Yes. Like when I tell you I have yet to find a black person project not just song but project the entire project that i did not like <laughs> all of his mm -hmm. i could literally just go on his name on my phone in my music and just play it all and i love artists like that um definitely gonna go to have to go with wale because wale is yes he they did him so wrong wale is like the iverson of rap like they did my <laughs> boy <laughs> so wrong <laughs> And it's like, Wale is so dope. He's so talented. And like, even musically, what he was, like, who was rapping to go-go beats like that? Like, wasn't nobody doing yeah. that? He, he, nobody was yeah, doing he was that. definitely pioneering some you stuff. You know what I'm saying? He brought jerseys back. <laughs> nobody wearing jerseys. And he come out here with these jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then his sneaker game is insane. But I love Wale. He's super creative, super dope. Um, definitely going to have to put Pac in there. I Okay. Saying, ride or die to the end. Okay. Outlaw Immortals, we out here. You feel me? <laughs> Don't know nothing else needs to be said. <laughs> You're thug life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, you said seven, right? What's that four? Mm -hmm. Okay, next I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna do a classic person. You know what? I'm gonna go Patty. Okay, Patty. Patty. Okay, yes, Auntie I'm, Patty. Listen, I love me some Patty LaBelle. I love it. She be singing. Mm -hmm. She be down. singing. All the singing way. Singing down. Hitting the singing notes out you her need. Shoes. Hitting the notes you didn't think you, you don't needed. need. You didn't even think you need it, right? <laughs> Ooh, <what's he laughs> taking it in places that like, and then staying on key. Like taking it yeah. in places that you never thought the song was going to go. Right. But she took it there. I'm going to cheat though because <laughs> I got to do a 5B because my 5B would definitely be Anita Baker. Like Patty and Anita is Ooh. like, they like a group effort for me. Ooh. Like I'm not going to listen to Patty and not listen to Anita. I got to listen to Come on them. now. <laughs> so, uh, so they oh, kind of in there together. <laughs> oh, Anita. I, I love I used to love Anita like 
and I got into stuff like that when uh, WGCI, anybody that's in that, like Chicago, Milwaukee area, WGCI would play all of those songs. And my mom used to listen to it all the time. So I used to listen <laughs> to like Anita and Kim and all those people. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to do that. And then six, I'm gonna go, did I say division already? No, you haven't said division yet. Boom, I'm throwing division in there. I was Boy, wondering when you were gonna throw division in there. That that little duo right there and mm-hmm. them dog albums they keep giving me. Whew. Talk about R and Okay. So okay, side side question before we get to your number seven. What is your favorite division song? Oh, that's a tricky one. Well, I'll just say the favorite, my favorite one right now. Right now, right now. I'm going to pick one off the new album because I can't even try to rack my brain because <laughs> you just put them on and you let them play. Like, Yeah, that's true. Like that's, it's hard. So I'm going to just, I'm going to choose my favorite song from the new album. Um, and it would have to be Dangerous City. I love Dangerous City. That is my jam. To that one. It's giving me my Caribbean vibes that you know I need. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's just giving me every I love that song. And the close second from that album would be Between Us. I love Between Us. Oh, okay. Damn it. I, I love um I think and right now it's just the style of it and the vocals was um conversations in a diner. Oh, oh. That one was like it was like honey. It was just mm. so perfect. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, you know what I seven. used to play the most from uh the al- from the album before that the line. That was my jam. Yes, we crawl. I can't sing. I ain't gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it myself. <laughs> but I love how you started it though. <laughs> but it was from the album September 5th. It was the last song on the album. The line. Okay. That song. He when I tell you the vocals. The rain, he hit every, <laughs> he was like, pick a rain, I'm about to do that. I'm He's about like, to do this. Look, I'm, the I'm the runs the and just, mm-hmm. oh, it's so, and it puts me in the feels. Like, it's so good. Yeah, he, his voice definitely does that. Very. So, and then seven. Hmm. Who should I go with for seven? I can't even believe that I'm narrowing this down so small because I love music. Like, how long? Right. Seven people. Um, you know, <laughs> right. since I just did r and I'm going to go with a newer artist. My seventh, I'm going to go with Jid or J-I-D, however you refer to him. Okay. Um, shout out to Twiggy. Twiggy put me on to Jid with the song Ed, Ed, and Eddie um, when I was over hanging out with him one day. And I've been obsessed with Jid ever since. Like, when I tell you the bars are on point and then like he gives you like like if black rapped more that's jid like mm. if like if black decided i'm just gonna i'm just gonna rap i ain't doing no no melodies and i'm just rapping like that's <laughs> that's what jid gives me like i would hmm. love for them to do something together because that would be fire i'm gonna have to check jid out i've never heard check of jid. jid out jid is super he's actually signed to dreamville okay you know what dreamville is you, you I don't. Like, okay. J. Cole's look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I was just going to look. I was going to smile and nod. And be like, I can tell good. by look, the... Okay. Write that to, look, I was going to yeah. write that to my list of things <laughs> to hit on the Google. The same label the Ari call. Linux is on. That's the label okay. that <laughs> Jid is There on. it is then. I there had to bring it, it back to r and for you. Because <laughs> you know I'm a big R&B listener. You but know, you would I'm... like Jid. Jid, because he has some of those, like, he has some melody songs on there, too. But he's, like, he's super talented. Super talented. Okay. I'm going to check Jid out. Mm-hmm. Um, So, like you were saying, oh, wait. for me, my top. I oh, can't, I just, because now I just said Jid, and I just, for, I, I just remembered who I should have said. So, I got to do a 7B. And okay. I got to pick. 7B. I got to put y'all on. I don't know if, I know you've probably never heard of Abso. Abso. I have heard is, of Abso. Okay, perfect. So if, <laughs> if Abso give me my like deep thinker spiritual vibes, like I freaking, mm-hmm. but then he also satisfies the hood in me. I love Abso. He's so dope. He's one of my favorite people from TDE other than J-Rock. That's my second favorite. And SZA, of course. But yeah. Yeah, SZA. Got to lift <laughs> a little bit of SZA. Um, okay, so my top seven, uh, or my top seven today, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I am a big, I listen to a lot of like pop music, a lot of like R&B and neo soul and soul. So um, in no particular order, I'm going to take it all the way back to the beginning of when I fell in love with music. And that would be the Clark sisters. Oh, come on, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm cheating by using a group, but I'm not cheating. I mean, it like, first of all, and the fact that I learned, I didn't even realize it until I got older, I learned so much about vocal control and runs and harmonies just from listening to my family and my church sing Clark Sisters songs. Mm-hmm. So love, love, love the Clark Sisters. And the, bio, the, the biopic that came out was so good. I haven't um, seen it. <clears throat> it was on Lifetime. Yeah, it was, it was good. And Kiki played Karen and... I mean, it was a, it was a really good cast actually, and they sang, they sang too. I heard they, they got like I, an interesting story too. It's a very interesting story. <laughs> I heard they got like stars. I think I think one episode we might even need to dive into some topics that would have come from that movie because mm-hmm. that was it was there were things that I learned about the Clark sisters and their family that I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, like there was some secrets. There was yeah. some there was some mess. Um, so the Clark sisters, definitely, um, Whitney Houston, I mean, I don't know what else needs to be said about the voice, right? but, but it's Nothing. Whitney. I mean, it's Whitney, like, it's, there it is. Um, that's all. Um, <laughs> and then even, um, kind of sticking in a little bit with the R&B would be, and I, I mean, I guess. I mean, she's she started off as R and B, but she's definitely not R and B, and she really is just her own genre now. Mm-hmm. And that's Beyonce. Um, Beyonce okay. is <laughs> Beyonce is just her own genre. And the reason I res- I have so much love for Beyonce as a musician is particularly for yes, her that best album. album ever. That album changed like changed my life and my perspective on music because she just really went some places with that. Like it, that was that was iconic. Uh, four was for me. Iconic. That's the um, number one Beyonce album. Is four. That's my number one Beyonce album for sure. Um, like there's there's just so many so many just like mm-hmm. timeless songs on four. Um, but just even like her grind, her performance. Like the, this woman yeah. will dance and sing for two hours straight. She will give you production. Like Absolutely. when you pay when you pay for that Absolutely. ticket, you know. That you, you are your money's that, worth. You getting your money's <laughs> worth every time. And I was I was fortunate enough to go to one of her concerts, and I really enjoyed myself. Um, it was I, it was actually the Carters, um, so I mm-hmm. got to watch her and Jay Z, and so that felt pretty cool. Um, so yeah, um, so Beyonce. Uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again: Jasmine Sullivan, Jasmine Sullivan, <laughs> Jasmine Sullivan. I mean, like I'm all about vocals, and I I believe she's literally one of the best vocalists in the game right now. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody's sleeping on her. Um, and then I would say like her male equivalent in underrated um, people who just give vocals, vocals, vocals is Avery Wilson. Oh. I don't really know too much about that. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to send you some Avery Wilson. Yeah, I I've, I've see, never heard that name before. <laughs> I got to see him live. Um, Avery Wilson, he did a tribute on like the Soul Train Awards last year. I thought year, you were going to say Freddie Luke Jackson. James. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I live for some. No, he's absolutely because honestly, they're pretty similar in in their ranges. But because I, I live for some Luke James, but yeah. Avery Wilson is one of my favorite vocalists of all time. I heard him live, but his voice is so clear. He's got some of the fastest runs. Okay, I mean, like runs. people. When I tell you, people study this man's runs because his runs mm-hmm. are so fast. It's just crazy, um, and he's just got a really good vocal quality. Um, this one is, I'm going to have to do like this. I think this is what, number five, six. This is number six. Oh, um, is it six? Oh. It's six. I it's, yeah, I think I think this is six. This is six. Um, so I'm going I'm to do six A and six B because when I listen to one, I usually listen to the other and I have a whole playlist where I listen to both of them. Okay. Um, and that's A would be Jill Scott and B would be Erica Badu. Yes! Um, I just can't. I was sitting, I was gonna get so mad at you because I didn't say Erica because I was hoping I was you trying didn't. to leave the R and B for you. Because I, I was know wondering you why you mostly, didn't say it. Because I know you were mostly gonna have R and B. And when you started yeah. getting down the list, I'm like, bruh, if he don't say Erica, I'm gonna be so pissed because I literally <laughs> left it for you. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. Erica Badu. 
Jill Scott. I even have to go back and say I watch that was the only verses I turned I tuned in to watch. I didn't watch it on time. I watched it later, but the fact that um so I guess I really didn't tune in to watch it, but I watched it. Mm-hmm. Um the fact that there was nothing but love in the atmosphere right, during that, that whole thing. And then for me, it's like it's the intermingling of their careers for me. It's the mm-hmm. fact that the very first song Jill Scott ever wrote was um You Got Me. And that mm-hmm. was the song Erica Badu sang and won the Grammy. So yes. technically, they won their Grammy together. <laughs> together. Like, and that was Jill Scott's first song. She became a singer after writing that mm-hmm. song. So and she got to me, perform it too. And she got to perform it like that, and that performance is legendary. Yes, legendary performance. So yeah, um, I, I have so many songs that I love by both. Ooh, of I was them. Gonna, I was gonna get so mad at you because I, I know you are. I'm like, bro, are. he's getting to the I end know of you this, are. and I didn't say it. <laughs> and it's like for me not to say it is blasphemy. Like my child it has is. the same birthday as Erica Badu. Like, That's what I'm like I literally, literally was listening to Erica Badu on her birthday having my baby. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Erica Badu is everything. <laughs> um, and even if I had to tack on a C of someone who I feel like really gives me that kind of difference that I that you don't get from a lot of people in the industry, and that would be Janelle Monet. I think it mm. she has such such an artistry to the way that she creates and composes albums. And then the fact that if you listen to her first album all the way up to her current album, mm-hmm. it's a movie. Whether or not I know she's done it intentionally, but every album goes into in this chronological order of the story of her life, but also the story of this character she plays when she performs and when she sings and when she creates these videos. Yeah. So if, yeah, I mean, amazing. Um, but that was my C on that one. And then finally, um, I consider this artist a little bit of a guilty pleasure. It just depends on the day because some days I'm like belting it and wearing the t-shirt and then other days I'm just like, I'm just the low-key fan. Um, even though I, I totally subscribe to being considered um, a little monster, I am a big fan of Lady Gaga. I yeah, just can't she's even. So talented. She's so talented. Um, and then for me, it's it's the fact that we're 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 birthday twins. Like we have the same birthday. Oh, I didn't know. Um, that. Yes, March twenty eighth. Um, she was eighty six. <laughs> I was ninety three. You know, we just came in there like a little little connection, a little link. Um, <laughs> But uh, for me, it's just like with with the type of art that she creates and the message that she has and just the difference, like the difference that she's made in the industry um, as a woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, and if you even like for me, uh, I mean, you'll go back and look at the list and the majority of them were female voices because for me it's just something about the female yeah. voice that's why i tried it's not to, about... to do them because i knew you were gonna have them i knew <laughs> you were gonna something have about them. the female voice and um for just about every single artist i called out they have shown the ability to sing multiple genres and that's just something that does it for me okay so yes so we just got through some of our favorite things so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a super quick break and then we're going to come back with another round of questions, but these are going to be a little bit more random. <laughs> yeah. All right. So guys, we'll see you right after the break. 